about your um, your laundry detergent. You know, it's associative. It's like you, I associated the fake smell of lemons with the clean house. Like Tide. You, yeah. A lot of people are Tide, but now we're that. And that's and also there's brands that you. I think we've been convinced by the media. If you are a good parent, if you are a good right. person, you're going to use this. You're going to smell like this. You're going to. It's 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 crazy. I think there's a lot of weird brainwashing. Yeah, with smell especially. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember when I uh, first started buying stuff for my baby, and you're gonna you go to the grocery store and then you get your laundry detergent. It's like no perfumes. Like. Oh, it doesn't smell like anything. smell like anything. Like yeah. a cute smell, like nice. Oh, or baby, baby powder. smell, or baby, baby powder. powder. Right, right. It, no. So at the beginning, it was like kind of, oh, really, I'm going to have to use that. But I stick into that. But it's it's really hard. It's the habit. Oh, and I think really the thing really is, hard. too, that as you face synthetic fragrances out of your world, so as you, and I'm not saying you can't wear your favorite perfume. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta pick and choose your battles, but we're just surrounded by fragrance. But as you kind of phase those out of your cleaning products and your, you know, the air fresheners and candles and all those, phase those things out, you really realize how how little you're smelling of the regular world. You know, like you do become desensitized to scent. And so when you start phasing them out, the great thing too is that you know a lot of those things are really associated with allergies and asthma and, and those. You know, things are disproportionately affecting our children. And so to phase them out of your house can, can also give your kids kind of a, a leg up on not being affected by those things, which is great. Do you, um, have, do you have on your website recipes for some of them? Yeah. Because like my house is mainly hardwood floor. Yeah. So after the kids were born, instead of, you know, using a wet Swiffer, instead of using their concoction, I remember I emptied it out and I was either buying seventh generation or method and I was just kind of doing half of that and half water. Yeah. I just kept refilling it, but I don't even know if that's yeah. better, um, but I don't think it's... Method is a really interesting brand because yeah. Method, you know, has a big profile of being Market very green great. and healthy. It's got a lot of fragrance. They have a lot of fragrance. I know. And now they've got ones that was like coconut fragrance. something, and I thought, or not, sorry, not coconut, it was cucumber or something, and I'm like, hmm, yeah. that would be a fake. They're very heavy yeah. fragrance. I really like seventh generation products, but you know what? I clean my whole house with vinegar. I mean, honestly, I clean, I, I clean my whole house with, with, with vinegar. And, to, and that's antibacterial as well? Or? Yeah, it kills everything. It's that's great for rain. Because that's, you're, you're, so that's always but the story. It's antibacterial. Yeah. Is it going to kill Now, me? I don't know you about spray wood. Doing yeah, that, I, I'll probably have to look for something. Yeah, for something. yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, just wet mop. Vinegar. So we basically put vinegar on water. We either, we either water. just wet mop with water or we have... Um, that's an old hardwood floor too. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. But if you wanted to smell, could you just like drop in a few essential oils in the vinegar? Yeah. Water. No, probably not vinegar. You know, I mean, I am very, like, I just put the vinegar in the spray bottle. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm kind of lazy. Do you mix it with water? Some yeah. people mix, you mix yours with water. She wants to know what you do. do the For cleaning the baby's ratio. toys, because I used to clean the baby toys with yeah. vinegar and water. You can do half and half. It really depends on it. I mean, I think most people dilute vinegar because they don't like the smell. Yeah, the smell. So it's for not me, good. I like the smell. And the weird thing is, you know how my, I thought that, like, fake lemons and pine smelled clean? My kids think vinegar smells clean because so that's what they awesome. grew up with. That's you know? So when I'm talking about cleaning products with people, you know that whole like mother knows best idea. So I think for us, really grandmother or great grandmothers mm -hmm. knew better because this is how our grandmothers cleaned. They cleaned with baking soda. They cleaned with, with vinegar. They cleaned with lemons. <laughs> you know? Soap, right? Right. Oh, soap and, and Castile soap. That's what is used on the floor, Castile soap. Oh, okay. With, with diluted with water. Okay. Yeah. And then I use, um, you know, like Trader Joe's has organic um, olive oil in a spray bottle. That's what I clean all my wood with, like all my, you know, wood tables and everything. The cooking spray? Yeah, the cooking spray. It's just pure olive oil. It conditions the wood. It like, you know, you like spray it, it soaks in, and then it, the wood's beautiful. And I know that like, Olive oil. It's just olive oil, you know. I have that so, part. and there's no, it doesn't have the propellant, so it's not like bad for the environment, <laughs> too. So, um, what are the the, the, the big big? Because this is something that yes, you are not going to change everything right tomorrow or who are the, the bad who are the bad guys, right? Yeah, yeah. in terms of what you're bringing into your house. Bad guys. Yeah, that you have to. Um, I think I think that fragrance would be something to look at first. 
So that would be that would be I think the first thing in your terms of your cleaning mm -hmm. products. Um, you know, they did this really interesting um, study where they looked at homes and then they looked at like the air outside of the home and they found that the air inside our homes is typically more polluted than the air outside now. A lot of because of cleaning products. Um, and also because of VOCs and paint, carpet, um, you know, like pressed wood, you know, like not real wood, but pressed wood emits different VOCs. It's usually yeah. formaldehyde. Doesn't the vinyl so, side help? Vinyl yeah. is, if you can avoid vinyl, like if you guys have vinyl shower curtains, try to get rid of those, because that is some bad stuff, vinyl. <laughs> I have a question for you. Um, cloth? You know, a cloth or a or like is yours a shower curtain? I actually have both the vinyl and then the cloth. Mm -hmm. the, the yeah. Garbage. The other thing about vinyl is that if you let it off gas for a long time oh, and yeah. it doesn't have that smell anymore, you're getting less I did. VOCs. Okay. Okay. So I'll one. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. We live, we're neighbors and um you know, when you live where they're doing construction, I've kept my windows closed pretty much during the construction. Mm -hmm. And then ever so often I'll open them for a few, when, when the workers are yeah. off, then I'll open them for a few hours, but I have kept it closed because I'm worried about all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so, okay, so the so the thing is, you I know your house, and you know, it's a fairly old house as sure, is mine. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Because older houses are porous, and so the air is coming in and out of the houses. Okay. It's the new houses because they're completely airtight. And they do that, it's really a, a, a strange phenomenon of kind of the um, environmental consciousness in a weird way, because what they're trying to do is make those homes less energy dependent, right? And so they're doing that by making them completely airtight. So if you heat the home, the air stays inside. If you cool the home. If you cool it, it stays inside. But the flip side of that is that any toxic chemical that's in your home stays inside too. So what you really want to do is just open your windows for like 10 minutes a day, every day, whether it's cold or, or warm. You know, just open them in the morning. If you live near our streets, open them in the morning when it's well, the traffic is quiet, and then you know, close them up again. Just let the air flush through your house. Um, yeah, yeah. But your your house, and then you know, air filters. I don't know if you guys have air filters, but you know, air filters are great. Like they really do work. And if you don't have have a filter? Yeah, have a filter. Your um, vacuum cleaner, if you have a HEPA filter vacuum cleaner, that's great. A lot of the things that are especially challenging to small children, like lead, um, is, you know, lead and flame retardants, they become part of the dust. So then the kids, you know, are crawling around and they have the dust on their fingers, they put their fingers in their mouths. That's the challenge. So the more you can take care of the dust, um, you know, the better off. Are. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're not remodeling an older house, if you, you know, you're not going to have lead dust. You know what I mean? That that's coming from paint, and it's coming from the outside. It's going to be peeling, and you're going to see. It. Right. But for them, what about like their kids crawling around on the floor? You, you guys have the foam mats, or do you have? What do you, you have? Is it, yeah. What do you? What do you recommend for that? So. Um, you know, I think the hardwood floor is great. Like, bare floor is great because you have, there's associations with carpet, depending on the type of carpet you have, with allergies and asthma and things like that. If you don't have a problem with that, then I don't think you need to worry about it so much. Um, you know, a natural carpet is the best carpet to have, like a natural fiber as opposed to like a, yeah, like a wool as opposed to something like this. Like this fiber, this carpet is basically, a fiber spun from petrochemicals like that is made out of oil you know it's not made out of any natural fiber so those are the kinds of things that you want to avoid if you can um and then let's see we're talking about opening a window pesticides so 80 percent of the pesticide exposure doesn't come through food it comes from the pest control products that you have probably under your sink you know 80 percent so that's a lot. Um, so if there's things under your sink that are, that have like the skull and crossbones and things like that, those are probably not the best things to have in your home to control pests. Um, pesticide exposure is linked to a lot of different health problems in children and it's great to just try to reduce it wherever you can. 
Another form of pesticide that people often don't know is triclosan. So you know the hand sanitizer, it says antibacterial, mm -hmm. antimicrobial, that's a pesticide. And they've done studies, the FDA did all these studies and they found that washing your hands with soap and water is actually better. You gotta move to the, the, the oh hand washing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so problem. here's the other thing about hand they're sanitizers. They're wanting to take it out, they're, not re or they're starting to not recommend it anymore. Yeah, so yeah. Even, Triclosan is, is banned in, I think it's Minnesota. Like, it's banned in a state, you know? So triclosan is, is just, it's crazy. It's, kids it's, can really get sick, so if you, they eat it, it's like... I don't know about that. I mean, I know that there are challenges with the alcohol-based hand sanitizers, right. right, when they eat them. I, I never, you know, I feel like... Well, triclosan is in um, the Colgate, uh, the, the more total. expensive Col Colgate Total, yeah. yeah. That's why I stopped using that one years yeah. ago. Yeah, you're saying, yeah, don't, don't, don't. Colgate Total's the last toothpaste to have to hold the sand yeah. in it. It's and now they're the apparently going to be taking it out, but I'm like, Well, they are because like people everything. know about it now. And, you know, the thing about triple sand that's crazy, too, is that it suppresses your immunities. So everybody's using it during cold season, mm -hmm. and it's suppressing your immunities. So actually, you know, you're contributing to the cold. It's a, <laughs> but it's a cycle. Like, you use it, you think you're... And you, then you, yeah. like you, you get sick, and then you're like, I'm going to protect myself. Exactly. I'm gonna do, it's like a, so it's an engineered yes. set, like horrible no, cycle. But if you like hand yeah. sanitizers, and I know, <laughs> like, I had it. hand sanitizers, especially when my, so my first, my son got really sick when he was eight weeks old, and he was in the hospital, and it was terrifying. And so from that point on, you know, I was, when, when I had infants, I was terrified of illness. And I had two infants in January, which is like cold season. So I had those hand sanitizers everywhere. Yeah. But I chose the ones without triclosan. So you just have to read them, you which know. Ones and are those? What? Which ones are those? Which ones You know, you just I don't know the brands, hmm? but you can get them. You can get them at Whole Foods. Trader Joe's. Has you can get them at Trader Joe's. I don't know the okay. necessarily brands, but just you know, triclosan. They have to put it on the label. Okay. And also people were marketing, you know, people like triclosan, they thought it was good, so everybody put it on the label if it was in the product. So just look for the ones that aren't, you know, that don't have triclosan. I don't have a problem with um, alcohol-based hand sanitizers because they do work as well um, to kill germs. You just have to make sure that if you have little kids, you know, you're keeping them out of your kids' mouths, which, you know, we do that with everything anyway, right? So it's, that's not going to be hard. And what about a heater? Now that it's getting cooler, I have an oil heater. Oh, I those, didn't even know. Those. Like a radiator? Yeah. Huh. Is it? I didn't even know that we have those in California. <laughs> I've seen those. A, yeah. is, it, is it a floor one or is it No, a, it's a... Uh, it's not a radiator, like it's just the portable one, but it's with oil, like that it... No, they made it. It's oil, yeah, right? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Is it... Mine's a plug-in. What is it? Just a plug-in heater, but I don't... So it's connected plug to the in? gas, meaning? It's connected to the, to the no, gas no, line? No, no, no. no the, the, the only thing is that it, it smells like, like it's oil, right? Yeah, no, because it, they are faster to heat and more efficient than yeah. other heaters. And they, in theory, are more ecological because y you are not circulating the air, so it doesn't get as much energy as other heaters. Regular heater. Yeah, but yeah, it's I the only thing is that inside yeah. the metal thing. Yeah. It's yeah. It, the 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 power inside. is heating oil. oil. I would look into it. I mean, if you if you give me the brand, if you email me, and okay. on the flyer, my emails there, I'll totally okay. look into it and see because I have, I've never heard of that before. So. Uh, because yeah, it smells like oil because it's it's heated by the oil, like it's plugged in. But yeah, you can smell the oil, and I every time like I plug it in, it's like oh my gosh, I don't know if this is good or bad. If it's natural because it's oil, or it's bad because right. it's oil. Oil. <laughs> Something that you don't want to use anymore, it's you know, it's just a shift, like it's uh -huh. just another shift. Don't beat yourself up for using it, you yeah. know. Like, no, the thing that I bought last year to put in my baby's room because I have the central heater, yeah. But sometimes we don't want it in the whole house, we, right? I just want in his room because it's very cold. This room, so I bought it. I don't know why I bought it because someone told me it's that it was cold. cold or something, it's, it's too cold. And I put it, but every time it works 
perfectly, but it's like every time that it would smell, they always like, oh, I don't yeah. know if this is but that's your gut instinct too, right? I mean, that's your that's yeah. your instinct right there. I mean, I would. I think we should look into it, and maybe it's completely fine. But yeah, I feel like true. your instinct yeah. is telling you this is not something I want to hear. Yeah, that's true. You yeah, it's mean? telling me I, I don't want to hear it, but it's telling so, me that it's like. Oh. And that's the thing is, you know, you, that's the challenge with like mislabeling your products and sort of hiding like the fragrance thing. You know, you you, you sort of discount that instinct because it's impossible to see what something really is you know and that's that's why it's I think frustrating to a lot of people because you feel like who am I gonna believe you yeah. know but it's like what you said you, you discover okay so let's say you discover that it's not such a great thing then you're gonna look for alternatives and you know even ask your friends now what I do if I find something is good I'll go on Facebook and I'll say Anyone have this? Right. People really like love to give you. Rocky's like will give you anything and everything. And you say like I need this really. Oh here it is. Like I have three hairs. Here's all three. <laughs> people send me like. Oh, I do. Okay. Now you are very generous. And so I think that's another way to keep things green is also to recycle. Oh totally. Things. And so you might have a friend. I might look in my and see that I have that. Now I have a little space heater. It might be a healthy. Yours might be just fine, but if it isn't, you might go on or pull up them and just say, does anyone have one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes we don't get something that's better because, oh my gosh, now we have to buy a new mattress that's like $3,000, you know? Yeah. But, <laughs> just buy a mattress cover. Exactly. So maybe there's something, that's what I'm saying, but maybe there's something maybe, like, but that's why yeah. I, I don't I'm listen to the noise because I'm like, I cannot get something like else. Like a certified organic mattress. They, they make them better you know, actually okay. Because then you, then you're, I mean, here's the thing about fabrics. Right? That, that's just stopping the chemical or the fire retardant from like, yeah. but then we still have a bed sheet though, so why? Yeah, it, we have so double? it becomes part of the dust. Okay. So that's the thing. So if you get like a thick mattress cover and you put it over the mattress and, and it goes all the way on the bottom okay. and then you put the sheet on top. Um, so I like the, I like organic. There's a great company called Naturepedic that makes, mm -hmm. um, and especially if you guys are, you know, if you know somebody who's, you know, have a new baby, um, you know, especially crib mattresses, baby mattresses, it's great to get those without flame retardants if you can. And actually, Naturepedic makes a beautiful flame retardant free line at baby to baby, and it's like 50 bucks or something, or 80 bucks. It's great. Um, so, but when it comes to things like cotton, like, um, you know, fabrics, you know, the, the question for me there is like, do I want to support the farmer that's choosing to make it with organic, that's choosing not to use pesticides, that's taking on that additional um, expense and and also, you know, sort of market fear to do that and follow my vision, or do I want to just buy the conventional? Because when you buy conventional fabrics, if you put it in the wash, you're going to wash any res residue right off of it. It's not a question of your personal health when it comes to fabrics. Really, it's not. You know, you're going to wash it. It's nothing's going to stay in the fabric unless you're talking about you know flame retardants and and foam and you know that kind of stuff is different. But like plain fabrics, okay. you know. So it's, for me, it's a it question nature, of really nature supporting or nature pedic. Yeah, okay. they're really great. Actually, they were um, they were my sponsor for my book. <laughs> they, they were great. So this is actually, if you do know somebody who's, you know, who is having baby, this is my my third baby here. Aww, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> um, and I wrote this book because um, I wanted to basically share all of my experiences. First with my kids. I actually started writing it as a letter to my kids. Um, and then I sent it to a friend of mine who was pregnant. And after she had her baby, because it's, it's pregnancy, birth, and beyond, which is like the first couple of months. Um, and after she had her baby, she, she was like, you have to make this book. Um, because it helped her a lot, you know? It's really not like an intense read. <laughs> it's very easy read. Um, it's a companion book to the other stuff that you might have. But it's kind of my perspective. Um, and then I also made it a free read on Mommy Greenest. So if you know somebody who's pregnant and you think might be interested in the information, they can just go to Mommy Greenest and click on the ebook, and they can read the whole thing on my site too. Um, so the last thing I will say is, um, and this is 
completely has nothing to do with your personal health or your children. It really is just for you guys as women. So um, I do this campaign every year called the Shop Drop Challenge, where I encourage women to give up shopping for 30 days um, in the month of January. Thank shopping, you. shopping for clothes. <laughs> shopping for clothes. Um, which may be challenging because of those after Christmas sales, <laughs> but you can decide to do it at any point in January, meaning you could do it on January 30th. It's just 30 days beginning in January. And the reason that we do this every year, and this is the third year that we do it, is, um, is the average American woman spends $60 a month on clothes and throws six pounds of textile waste into the landfill. Mm -hmm. So collectively, we 160 million American women um, if we just stopped doing that for 30 days, we could save $10 billion and a billion pounds of textile waste. Nearly, almost $10 billion and a billion pounds. So I've done it for three years. We, um, we, our record is 30,000, um, 3,000 pounds and $30,000. We're trying to double that this year. There's a sign up on Mommy Greenest. If you guys want to do it, we're gonna have a big party here in LA. It's gonna be super fun. And the great thing is that it, what I try to do with the program is really encourage women to thrift, which is where I pretty much exclusively shop now and have done for like five years, thrift and then swap. So like what you were saying, you know, do you have something, swapping kids clothes, all swapping the time, kids clothes, swapping clothes, and then why. thrift shopping. You know, it really keeps everything in circulation, it keeps clothes out of the landfill, and it saves you so much money. Um, so the Shop Drop Challenge is at mommygreenest.com. Um, this is at Mommy Greenest slash ebook if you want to see it, and that's my spiel. You want to purchase it? <laughs> and you, you can buy it for 20 too. bucks if you want to give it to somebody. I do have a question. Yeah, you can have questions. And then up in the, probably next weekend, we're completely redoing our, uh, they're turning three, so it's like a third birthday. So uh, when we first did the nursery, I got the no VOC paint. Not Good. the low, but the no. Yes. Right? And there was still a little bit of a smell residue a re yeah there was just something there so I was like okay and I checked the label no so we're gonna have we're gonna re uh, paint the whole thing just a, a white uh -huh. and then next weekend I'll redo actually you know like the bright colors and stuff like that should I have him sleep in the living room for the first night totally it because has we'll, we'll paint it white. Have sleep with you for, for like, <laughs> no no for no my sister's <laughs> a town visiting she can sleep, can sleep with her in the living room for like three or four days even, even, even with no video the thing about no VOC paint is it has to cure. So even though you, you still have to, it will be no VOC paint when it finally dries and cures. Okay. It depends on the paint that you're using. It cure to the wall or something? But it has to cure. It has to like go through its process. And, and so there are, you know, if you smell something, then there's something in the air that you, yeah. you know. And I thought so. there wasn't supposed to be with the no VOC. And you can call the manufacturer too. Find out who's the it. manufacturer. I think it was Bear that we had used last time. Uh -huh. Yeah. From the one from Home Depot. Yeah. I'm sure it was that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of paint companies do know VOC now, yeah. and it's definitely the best way to go. There's also, well, a better way to go. There's also, like, um, there's, like, milk paints that are really cool. Yeah. There are, like, all these. There's a paint company called Quiet Home that does basically all the Benjamin Moore colors, but um, they're, you know, a different grade of VO, no VOC. I don't know. If you want referrals, I can totally so share a couple days and then open them. But definitely at least a couple days. And again, like your intuition, you know, like yeah. if you're like, hey, that doesn't smell right, have your, you know, keep the windows open for a couple days and have them sleep in the living room. Okay. You know? Can I ask you a question about, there used to be a place called Living Green, mm -hmm. over city it's not there anymore. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, oh I, think I it's love gone. that place. Heart. Yeah. But they used to have something that you could put onto furniture, okay. like that, you know, to seal it. They were supposedly, you could seal the toxins into the, oh, wow. you would put like a coat, safe coat. So I've never. Safe, safe coat is a kind of a paint too. I, I'm gonna think of what it is, and you can actually paint your, you could paint it, paint it outside, paint till it dries, and it take, keeps the toxins in. I don't know. See, I'm gonna find out because that's they're yep. online. Now. It's closed. Online. Yeah, it's right by. It was right, right in downtown. Yeah. 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 They're online now, right? These are online. There's one in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the thing about toys, so every year another toy company gets busted that has imported their toys from another country and they find that they're contaminated with lead or cadmium or something else. So this happens all the time. 
Um, so I think in light of that, if you can choose toys that are made in America, the, the regulations for toys are actually very good in America, surprisingly, considering the regulations for everything else are not so great. But um, yeah, the toy regulations are, are pretty good. So look for Made in America. There's also, um, there's a really cool store called Caro Bambino in Santa Monica. I don't know if you guys have seen that store. I love it. There's a really great company called Safe Ducky. Safe Ducky is certifying stores, so they're going into the stores. They have this crazy machine that you can like scan the toxic content of products. Wow. <laughs> And so they're certifying stores, so they'll go into a store, they'll check all the products on the shelves. If there's something that is not, um, is not up to their standards, then they'll work with the store owner and the manufacturer to take it off of the shelves. So they're really a great resource too. Um, okay. So you can check out the store is? Caro Bambino is on Main and, Street, okay. and then Safe Ducky is the, they are the company that certified that store. And that's how I know Scarab Mambino is through Safe Ducky. Because I haven't bought like, you know, baby toys in a long time. <laughs> yeah. But you know, again, like there's different plastics, right? There's you want to look for if you're gonna look for plastic, you want to look for BPA plastic for sure. Uh -huh. um, avoid PVC, avoid avoid vinyl. Because uh -huh. um, those are, you know, those have different issues. Um, there's a great company that uses recycled milk gallons to yeah, make toys, toys, green toys. Yeah. Those are awesome. Yeah, I love that company. Yeah. Um, but I think in general, Made in America is great. And if you can get non-plastic toys like cloth or wood, those are even better. Okay. I think they are also, the toys have a lot of inks. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking the paint, and that could be painted for green toys. Like, it's yeah, a bright, it isn't be, it a yeah. that makes like, they don't use a lot of toys. Like, what method is it? Yeah, which, right. Which method? Baldorf. Method? Yeah. What? Which method uses, like, they don't Baldorf. use a lot of toys? Yeah, Waldorf. Waldorf. Waldorf, Waldorf. Waldorf. Also, yeah. No, but it's also another one. It's Waldorf Italian. Waldorf is wood. Yeah. What's the so Italian like, one? Montessori? No, that's, it's another no. It's a little town. Come on. I'm so brain dead. <laughs> Come on. It's Reggio. Reggio, oh, Reggio yeah. yeah. Reggio and Waldorf, everything is wood. There's yeah. no, yeah, there's so no batteries, like, there's no plastic. Thing. That's the other thing. That's For Christmas last year, Santa got, yeah. you know, my kids a little, uh, okay. a kitchen set. And I went with kid craft because I thought, you know, it's not plastic, it would be more of the wood kind. And that's the same thing I want to do for the, her Barbie doll houses here. But then I realized even the wood, because they broke off the oven door. You look at it, it's not wood. It's, it's pressed wood. It's pressed wood. And I'm yeah. like, that's all glue that's all in there. Yeah. So you're thinking that I was going better instead of buying the plastic kitchen set. But I'm like, that glue is pretty toxic. Yeah, the pressed wood can be really challenging because it's formaldehyde. That's what I was like. Oh, so, you know, you, but you can, I know there are better companies that make those types of um, toys. I'm trying to think of the name of, I have to go with ones that are like real wood. No, and one day, I, I had to. Or free, like you, you know, also from, just look for yeah, yeah. You can ask the manufacturer. Yeah. One day, I, I had to research for a product and um, I was seeing these toys with soy based ink, but then, I found out that if they only use 8% of soy and the 92% is... They can still say that. They can still say that. They can still say that it's soy-based. Oh. So it's like 8%. 8%. So we blame the government. It's like basically <laughs> not, yeah. <laughs> Just a little soy, yeah. A little splash of soy. <laughs> so crazy. If we all did that kind of research, then we wouldn't buy those toys. Yeah. And then those companies would be out of business. So yes, our government is very lax. But I think we as consumers have a responsibility to choose what's in our homes wisely, you know, and to do the research. And the, the government does not make it easy, like especially with the fragrance loophole and the, you know, all the stuff. But there's so much action going on. They just, like um, Home Depot and Lowe's, I think, just took all their, like they got, you know, busted for phthalates in their flooring. They took all of that out. Like there are people that are really, really on this and there are a lot of companies they're responding. Target is a company that has really responded. Walmart is one of the biggest purchasers of organic okay. products in the entire yeah. world. Awesome. Oh. Organic cotton. H&M mm -hmm. is doing know. like, you know, okay. they're all their cotton will be organic by 2020. And again, it's not about like your body absorbing pesticides, but it's about that commitment to shifting to organic production to more sustainable production. And the people who are making it. And the people who are making it. And the workers it. who are in the field. 
codes, you know? I mean. But circling back to the toys, I think it's easy when they're really little because you don't need much and you can mm -hmm. have a wooden car and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, right now I'm up against like Star Wars and Ninja Turtles <laughs> and 